right, day two, part six or seven, I'm not sure. I don't know if you can see me at all, but I wanted to tell you, my friends, there is a God. <laughs> a miracle has happened. Unbelievable. So I was walking past um, Ocellets or something like that. Well, made a slight wrong turn, had to go up the hill to get back to Ocellets. Yeah, about two, two kilometers up a hill, my knees were killing me. Had to give myself the most <sighs> enthusiastic motivational speech I've ever given in my life. Got got up, and um, from that point on, made a deal with my feet that if they had gotten me to that that village, that point, that um, they would be able to make the calls. So they were ready to call today. And so then becomes the question of camping for the night. Now, <laughs> you remember those um, those uh, hunting lodges that I told you about? Uh, I was thinking to myself, if we could find one of those, that would be just absolutely ideal, wouldn't it? Get all this hassle of being outside, having to do everything so carefully to keep it outside, to keep it inside, to keep it away from the wet, to keep things clean that need to be clean, to make sure that I stay in one place as I sleep, to take it all down carefully. It's just a big headache. It works, but it's a big headache. And um, after today, it was a really, really rough day. And I didn't want to deal with it, so I thought I'd look for, for one of these, um, one of those hunting cottages, hunting um, shacks, I guess, raised shacks that they put around meadows to, to shoot the deer that come by. Um, so, went past Ocelots a little bit, along the right direction, but it was a major freeway, and I knew there weren't going to be any hunting locations near a major freeway, so I had to decide if I was going to continue that way and just find a place within a half an hour or so as the rain clouds were coming and all, or go off this, off the beaten track you know, kind of in a different direction, just a, a shot in the dark. And so, first <laughs> I asked my feet, or my knees rather, oh yeah, by the way, my, my right knee started hurting as well, the exact same thing. Interesting. So I asked my knees, since they were making, calling the shots now, you know, what they would prefer to do. They seemed to feel that there would be a great deal less stress for them if there was no setting up of the tarp as well. Less crouching, less crawling around, less hassle. Yeah. So, they agreed that we were going to look for a hunting shack. Um, and then, and then I prayed and told God that if it was possible, I would really, really, really like to be able to sleep with a, a roof over my head and four walls around me with a warm excuse me, with a dry seat, and um, then I asked him to help me see it, too, because they're usually just a little bit past the tree line, made to blend in so the deer don't see them. So I was walking along, it was um, approaching a bird almost landed on the windowsill. Anyway, yes, windowsill, we'll get to that. Don't get ahead of me here damn bird. Um, so it was about oh, approaching 6.30, and 6.30 is the time when I say, I'm going to stop, and said, oh no, no, I'm sorry, it was approaching 6. And 6, actually 6 is the time that I said after last night, 6 o'clock is when I want to have a location to start setting up, to be set up by 6 when the last light fades. But to be set up by 6.30 when the last light fades. It's been one of those days. And uh, so I uh, uh, was walking along this, this country road. You know, I didn't even know if it was going anywhere. It could have been going to a dead end. I just knew it was going away from the main highway. So it was a better shot to find a place from which people shoot. So, you know. And uh, kept going, kept going, kept going. Came to this village like, oh, man people. There's not going to be a hunting location around people, so screw it again. It's like, okay, we'll go through this, see what's on the other side, and um, then head off into the forest to find a place for my tarp. 
in the middle of the village, I look out over the, the whole, the whole uh, field that's past it, and at the very, very end, I think, think, and this would have been like the fourth or fifth false alarm, think I saw, thought I saw, a, one of these cabins. And so I, I get out my camera and go into full zoom, which actually does help me see be slightly better than the naked eye. Look at the picture, it's like, yeah, it's a little fuzzy, I don't know, and it's way out there, and all the houses can see the way there and everything, but it, it, it could be, and what's the worst that could happen? I find out that it's not, and I sit up there. So I made a long loop around to avoid being seen as much as possible. Um, finally came around the corner of the forest, and what do I see but oh, a hunting lodge. Now, hold on a second. I think the batteries might be running out. Nope, we're still going. I'll have to get to the end of the story. Well, then, the, the problem is, you go you go up this ladder, it gets up to the top, it's like, oh, it's going to be locked. From the outside, I had seen that there were covers for the windows, that there was wooden walls that... I was like, oh, it's going to be locked, it's going to be locked, it's going to be locked. I climb carefully for multiple reasons. One, because these ladders always look unstable. Two, because my knees were killing me. And three, because I was afraid of what I was going to see. Come to the door. Come to the top of the platform. Look. And it's open. It's wide open. I walk in. And there are two chairs. And covered windows. And a dry floor. My friends. You have no idea how fantastic this is. This is like a slice of heaven. Here, here. Okay, continuation of day two, part six or seven. Um, just had three sets. That's 12 AA batteries die on me at one time. So tomorrow the first thing I have to do is buy new batteries for this camera and my flashlight. <laughs> I said batteries were a problem, didn't I? Anyway, just wanted to finish up. Oh, wanted to show you the view. I don't think you can see anything. I'll try to show you something in the morning. But there's the sun setting. We've got the forest behind us. Yep, come on, focus, focus, baby, focus. There we go. And this whole empty field out in front of us to the hills and the forest out there in the distance. Of course, my only concern is going to be during the night that, you know, the owner will decide to come and check, but there's almost no chance at all of that happening. And if that's the worst that can happen, then it's going to be a good night. <laughs> so good night.